so without further ado, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Mr. Mo Hamden um, is going to be coming up to the stage um, to give you a presentation on some innovations that are happening in, uh, and I call this North Central Alberta because I, I still feel like we're, we're in the south way down here. So um, I do call Drayton Valley North Central Alberta. Um, and it's interesting, when we were selecting our keynotes uh, for Pathways, we ran down a list. I think we had about 35 um, different names that were suggested from across North America as leaders in sustainability in one aspect or another. Um, Mo Hamden's name popped right to the top in terms of what are we doing right here in Alberta that's innovative, it's a showcase, it sets an example and raises the bar. Um, in terms of the initiatives that urban municipalities can take um, to be sustainable cities. And so I'm going to read to you uh, just a little snapshot from his bio and then allow him to come up and talk to you about that innovation. Mo Hamden's lived in Drayton Valley since moving to the community with his family at the age of four. His family owned a local grocery store and at an early age he learned the value of hard work and honesty while working in the store. And after graduating from university, Mo returned to Drayton Valley with the same values he learned as a child and took a seat on town council where he was still in his 20s. He served in government first as a councillor, then as mayor for 20 years. During his four terms as mayor, Mo has presided over a period of tremendous growth and prosperity for the town and has helped shape Drayton Valley into a modern, progressive, and dynamic community. Welcome, Mo. Thank you, Lisa. Um, great job on organizing this. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, the morning presentation so far. Um, it's great to see what other communities are doing and listening to the stories and really enjoyed um, listening to the two mayors that were up here this morning. Huge fan of both Mayor Mandel and Mayor Nancy. I think they do an amazing job. <clears throat> so I'm here today to talk a little bit about Drayton Valley story. And, um, some of the things that we're doing, because it's good to listen to some of the things in the larger cities, and the questions always come up, is it possible in smaller communities, what is it you do, and, and stuff that just sort of makes a lot of sense to, uh, to smaller communities. So um, when both mayors were up here, they were talking about the awards they got and the recognition, and you know, ourselves on the back for uh, a lot of the things and so this was a couple of years ago that I was um, in Ottawa at the uh, Federation of Canadian Municipality Sustainability Conference and where Drayton Valley was recognized and we received the Sustainable Communities Award so that was great but in our eyes we got the award for a lot of the work that we had done but as I said in our eyes we were just getting started there was a lot of things that we still wanted to do that we still felt we needed to do and uh, we've taken the approach of, uh, you know what, we're going to lead by example, we're going to show that we're going to do it, the community will get involved, they'll get engaged, and it has led to a very successful uh, process. So, um, Lisa talked about Drayton Valley and kind of where we are, but for those of you that maybe don't know much about Drayton Valley, we're about three hours just northwest of Calgary. We're blessed to have uh, a lot of oil and gas activity within our our community and, and that is probably one of the main economic drivers. The forest industry is uh, strong, agriculture, we have an emerging tourism industry, we've got great skilled and trained workforce, excellent transportation links and uh, you know it, it's, it's quite exciting time to be living in Drayton Valley. Now uh, on this slide I just want to talk about a few initiatives that, uh, that we undertook long before sustainability was the in thing to do, uh, just to show that that's kind of been in the mind of our community for a long time. And if we go back to well over 20 years when uh, building a new hockey arena, um, wanted to find a use for the old facility and what would we do with it, and it has become our civic center. So the old hockey arena where I used to play hockey growing up now houses the town office, council chambers, municipal library, as well as the fire hall. We have well-established parks, trail systems, and we'll continue to be budgeting and adding more every year. Uh, we've been in the recycling program early into the 80s uh, and uh, has just gotten stronger. And we've received uh, you know, several awards as well through our Aspen Waste Management Authority on some of the landfill practices and the successes that we've had. And um, when we... Then moving forward, uh, when we put together our municipal sustainability plan, 
what we didn't want to do was just create a plan that would sort of sit on the shelf. We wanted to have that living document, that document that guided us on everything that we do moving forward. I uh, talked about how it combines with municipal development plans, transportation plans, water, everything we do. We wanted to make sure that we were inclusive in that. And one of the huge things that made it successful, of course, was the public consultation process. Uh, the mayors earlier talked about how the, the public demands and they want the sustainability. Well, um, that's true that there is that and they have a lot of great ideas and we wanted to make sure before we put the plan on paper that we wanted to, to get that engagement, get those ideas and put it together. And of course it covers the, the, the pillars that are pretty standard, whether it be arts, culture, governance, social, environment, and so on. I just want to go back on the one previous page too, I just wanted to touch on um, the sustainability of course goes far beyond just the, um, the environment. We talked about all the pillars. Um, so we have more than just the traditional municipal facilities into the conference centers, the uh, accredited child care center, as well as a new children's library. So we're looking at, uh, at all the different aspects of that. And this is, I think, just shown proof that we didn't want that plan to sit on the table, uh, on the shelf. Some of the accomplishments, uh, after three years, 86% of our first year goals have either been completed or ongoing, most, by the way, completed. 65% of our five year and 48% of our 10 year goals already started and or completed and ongoing. So we've, we've had a lot of success and it will continue to evolve as we move along. But what exactly does that mean? You know, completed, um, uh, you know, what are some of the actual projects? So in here, I just want to talk about a few examples and share, you know, Drayton Valley's story. Um, effluent sales, uh, you know, uh, sell a lot of water. Because we're in the oil uh, territory, a lot of concern, a lot of criticism about the waste of potable water. In, in the oil field. So what we've been able to do through a, a bit of marketing and metering is reduce the waste of potable water and uh, increase the sales of effluent water, wastewater, and generate significant amount of revenues. I think uh, probably about a half a million dollars a year in our community. We are building a new water treatment plant. Ours is well in excess of 40 years old. Technology is old, the plant is old, and its need for expansion and upgrading and we wanted to make sure that in the planning, designing, and construction of the new water plant, which is happening this year, we took all, the, all that into account. And I just want to read to you the quote from our engineers with ISL. Is a Drayton Valley water treatment facility is a thoughtful and careful blend of sustainable and attractive building, modern small footprint process technology, and long-term operational maintenance needs for our, our operators. So we wanted to make sure, of course, in the design, if we're going to be spending in excess of $20 million on a facility, that it is not just that box. It, it has a sustainable components to it. The integrated waste strategy, strategy plan. So taking a look at the waste, the handling, the recycling, the using, and, and what we can do from with the whole thing, we've completed that strategy and uh, giving us a, a clear picture on, on where we need to go, identifying some of the gaps and moving that forward. So that's coming along quite nicely. Uh, part of sustainability, of course, is within the governance and community and we've um, done a lot of work with Brazil County in the past, uh, working collaboratively with our neighbors and several joint agreements and we're working whether it be on infrastructure, tourism, economic development, uh, so many areas that uh, the two municipalities are collaborating in and it definitely makes um, much more efficient use of our time, their time and of course working together we're far more successful. We also <coughs> completed an energy and water audit and we're constantly do ongoing upgrades to, uh, to improve the efficiency of our facilities. And several of the recommendations in that plan have been implemented and we continue to implement uh, quite a few of them. And of course, a lot of them, it's amazing when you look at the uh, cost benefit analysis, it just makes so much sense to uh, implement some of those changes. Four years ago, also, we got back into the uh, communities in Bloom and this past year it was, uh, you know, very successful that, you know, we, uh, we in Drayton Valley won the uh, provincial award with the, with the five blooms and our community came out on top as the winner. We will actually be hosting the Communities in the Blooms awards this fall. 
And uh, we've really encouraged and engaged the youth in everything we do within the community, and, and that recognition has definitely been there. But not only have we engaged the youth in that, we try to engage the youth and the seniors in everything we do, and also together in some of the conferences where we bridge that generational gap and get that understanding. It's amazing the, um, the success and the buy-in and the excitement that we've seen in the community. Uh, we had a conference a few months ago, just a day conference with seniors and youth in the community and all the activities they did together, and uh, it, it, was, uh, it was phenomenal. A big part of what I really want to talk about today is our economic development strategy, our diversification um, strategy where we're going. And a lot of that is uh, through, uh, through the innovation and what I call the biomile. And um, what we want to do is create that diversified economy that embraces innovation, entrepreneurship, rural development, and is environmentally and economically sustainable. And as I said, you know, we call it the biomile. So it's an integrated bio-industrial park that looks at the conversion, refining of biomass into energies, uh, different biomaterials and biofuels. And what we want to do is create value from the waste fiber um, and all different other products and, 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 and bring communities together. So one person's waste is another person's feedstock. And our goal in this industrial park is to try and create that net zero park. We've heard a lot of talk about waste and we want to make sure it's used and of course we're hearing more and more that waste is actually a commodity and we truly believe that waste is only waste if you waste it. So find that use, make it, give it some value. The principles of our biomile, our bioeconomy are uh, as shown above. We want to have that proactive approach to economic diversity. We want to pursue renewable energy, promote our quality of life through the innovative economic development, and of course address the global needs um, with the resources and, and energy. So we listed some, uh, some principles that we wanted to make sure that we held to as we pursued uh, the, uh, the, the creation of the bioindustrial park. And it talks some of our goals for the sustainable bioeconomy, whether it be economic, environmental, social, and global. And as you can see, there's a long list on each of them. Uh, yes, it's about jobs and revenue and all of that, but it's also the zero waste and addressing future global needs, quality of life. So it's um, you know, far reaching the, uh, the goals that, that we have. Now, facilitating this opportunity, I talked to you about getting the partners together, creating those strategic alliances so that one company can work with the other, use the feed as the import, and, and create those partnerships. But it takes a lot more than that to happen. So as a municipality, we had to facilitate. What did we do to make things happen? And we designated in excess of a square mile. We've set it aside, said this is going to be the home of the bio mile with other opportunities for growth because we recognize we'll go far beyond that limited space. We've gotten the cooperation of Warehouser, who's one of our partners that are there right now, as well as Valley Power, our cogen plant has been there now for almost 20 years. The designated lands have been rezoned. The infrastructure planning is in place, and we've also secured additional land. So as this is happening, as it's moving along, industry that's coming doesn't have to worry about going through the zoning, dealing with, uh, with any issues that we are there, we're, we're prepared and we are a, um, a community that is, that is welcoming. Uh, some of the partners, of course, I talked about uh, that being a, a big key in what we do. So we have a lot of industry, Warehouse of Valley Power, Muscoma, Xylitol, TTS, Kiara. So several that we're working with, uh, quite a few of uh, educational institutes, not only in Alberta, but in Germany. When we look at CLIB 2021, it's a a cluster of academia, chemical companies, government that work together to look at opportunities for green chemicals, as well as Carl Zuhe Institute of Technology, also out of Germany, and as well government. Um, nobody can go at this alone, so we've got the municipal government, provincial government, federal government, different associations all working together because it's important that, that we get the support from all levels. 
one common theme as we're putting all this together is we needed that one piece that would support this whole BioMile initiative. And some of the questions coming up as far as some of the research being new, um, the need for skilled labor, the uh, ability to take something and commercialize it. And there was a lot of questions. So we're putting together and we hopefully be in construction this fall. We're in the d design stage now, as well as um, input from our stakeholders in, in, in coming up with that final design that will allow for skills training, research and development, business incubation, applied research, and set it up so that we will have something that will bridge the, uh, the technology to the product at the end and uh, create that link. It will, as I said, serve as a catalyst for research innovation, and it is a critical part of our infrastructure. The industry that we talk to, that we attend, that we have discussion and we're attracting, uh, this is key and it's important to them that we, uh, that we work with them and partner with them in putting together the Clean Energy Center and help foster that growth and encourage that change. So there's just a, a little bit of additional information there and it will help us lead the way in the creation of other centers. Uh, so when we talk and we're dealing with the provincial government and getting funding and putting this, it's not just what we want to do for Drayton Valley. What we're showing is what we're doing can then be transported, you know, transplanted in other communities and, and create that same bioindustrial park, the opportunity to have resources and facilities. And we're just uh, pretty excited about taking the lead on something like this. Another project that we're doing, and this one also excites me, and um, it, it has to do with uh, waste diversion out of our landfill. And our project, uh, working with uh, Waste Away and our landfill, is to create an ecological fuel, uh, we call it process processed engineer fuel. And um, through this process, we're hoping to divert about 95% of our waste from the landfill. Of course, all the recycling and reusing and those projects are still ongoing, but we all have waste. So through this, we have the opportunity to become 95% uh, free. And, you know, I have Patricia McConkey here from Waste Away, Tom Rogers from MCL, and my BioMile coordinator from Drayton Valley, Christina Valley. You know, they're the three, they're the key to, that are going to make this happen. And it is a very exciting project uh, once it's done. We're working with CCEMC, and our goal is to create the engineered fuel, create a fluff, and uh, right now the, the, the best use would be a engineered fuel that we can then partner with a power company. By using it, they can reduce the, um, the uh, use of, of coal, and the life of this project is about 2 million tons, I believe, of greenhouse gas reductions with this project alone. So that's huge impact. We're reducing the waste in the landfill. We're keeping some of the coal in the ground, and we're reducing greenhouse gas by 2 million tons over the lifetime of this. And of course, again, something that can be copied in other municipalities. But we also have an opportunity to partner with a lot of municipalities or industry or corporations by saying we're willing to accept your waste. Municipalities can, be, can make a decision today with very little effort and cost saying we will be a waste-free community and we can do it now by partnering with Drayton Valley and we'll accept your waste. And, and, and so there's that uh, benefit, I think, which will be great. And it's going to be um, pretty exciting. A little talk, of course, of do you really want waste to energy? Uh, I think with this, it makes a lot of sense because, as I said, you're keeping the coal in the ground. But because we're not building that energy facility, we're just partnering with somebody, we're creating a fluff. That fluff can be used for multiple things. It can be used for soil reclamation, best use right now would be through the uh, coal reduction, but we're not limiting the future. As things go on, as different uses become available, we're able to do something to address a significant need today without hindering our future uh, possibilities with that. We have a lot of opportunities within our, within our bio mile. The integrated cluster, pilot demonstration plants, pallet plants, the uh, fiber matting plant we have right now, and it should be up and going, part of one of our partners, 
taking waste fiber, creating the fiber plants, fiber mats to be used in automobiles. And within about two months, the material used for panels in cars, I think down in Detroit, will be made in Drayton Valley and shipped uh, to the auto plants to then be molded into car parts. With the Clean Energy Center, uh, there's going to be, uh, and thank you for that, by the way, <laughs> um, um, a lot of research development. I, what, we, what we've noticed and what we wanted to do is, is adapt to the changes, understanding that the, uh, the forest industry is evolving. It's no longer two by fours only and boards. There's uh, such value in that fiber and the conversion and, and what you can do with it, whether it be energy, commercial products, chemicals, uh, on and on. So looking back, one thing that we've tried to do, and it was always important, is maintain that constant communication with the community. And in areas as we moved along, if we found some negativity or some pushback, what we've, what we've really done is tried to make sure that they were engaged. So within our BioMile, for example, a little pushback, we created a community engagement committee. And we put some key stakeholders on there, but we made sure that we took the most vocal opposition in our community put them on the committee and said, we do care about what you say. You've, you know, we want to know why you're concerned, why you're upset, and how can we address those moving forward. So if we take the most vocal opposition, include them at the beginning, we know the result at the end is going to be that much better. It's all about relationships, whether it be with industry, our community, other levels of government, education. It's so important that that, that happens to, uh, to make this successful. And there's so many funding opportunities, um, whether it be provincially or federal, that um, as Mayor Nenshi said this morning, it's the municipalities that make things happen that are involved in the day to day, and that's where the money is. So it, if they have a goal, a desire, they make, you know, they have grants and funding available which allow us to get the job done. So we need to be aware about that, communicate and access that to make a lot of what we want to happen. And we're going with what we feel is the best fit for our community. It's just not what I feel, it's what the community feels through the discussion, through the engagement of what makes sense for our community, what fits. And uh, we've never felt pressured. We've taken the time to make sure that what we're doing is right for Drayton Valley. Some of the big projects have you know, given us the momentum, shown the leadership and created benefits for all, but it's the softer side that's ongoing, the feel good moments and you know, keeping the engagement high. Uh, the photo there, I talked about our childcare. We have an early development childhood uh, facility and a um, picture of uh, our person in charge receiving the uh, Prime Minister's Award this past year. So she was in Ottawa being recognized for the work that uh, she is doing in our facility for childcare in Drayton Valley. And it was uh, pretty exciting and we're pretty happy for Berners to uh, be recognized as she was. But a lot of what I've talked about today is about attitude, you know, about wanting to make it happen. If the community demands sustainability, don't approach, you know, we said we're not going to approach it with fear that oh, it's a burden, it's something we have to do. We recognized it as an opportunity. The diversion of water, over half a million dollars of additional revenue. The project with Waste Away, ability to save ongoing long term costs in our landfill without any future expansions uh, or delayed for a long time, um, post-closure costs, uh, keeping our tipping fees down, the biomile, it's all exciting. And, and with the biomile and the work we're doing, it, it, it's a great opportunity. I see it as an opportunity to attract hundreds of millions of dollars of investment into our community, hundreds of thousands of tax dollars into our coffers, and hundreds of jobs coming to Drayton Valley. So it's an opportunity. It's all about the attitude. So it's my presentation. I just want to thank you for giving me the time. And um, also at the very bottom of that, I'm just going to go back to it. Home of Pathways to Sustainability 2014. So we want to host. We will be hosting the conference next year. I hope all of you have a chance to come out to Drayton Valley. Uh, this is a great opportunity to share and to learn and be able to come out and see Drayton Valley and help um, experience our story. Thank you.
Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Thank you, Mayor Hampton, for um, a presentation. Uh, and what we would like to do now is this morning we heard from the big city mayors, and when you work in a big city, you have big city governance, you have big city bureaucracy, you have big city issues, and it's kind of like turning things around really slowly. But from what I hear from you, Mohamden, you were able to turn things around very quickly, if I hear you right. Uh, yeah, that, that is correct. We do have that ability to move, move a lot quicker, a smaller community, a lot less bureaucracy. Uh, but I think one of the great things, too, is it's all about the staff, and, and we got some amazing staff in the office. Uh, and you know engaged. everybody. I know everybody. You can walk in there and, and share Tim Hortons, et cetera, and, and yep. it's like there's a relationship there. Yeah, and Drayton Valley, it's one of those small communities when you're driving, you don't have to signal when you turn because people know where you're going. <laughs> so here's what I'd like to do. I think this is an opportunity, friends. Uh, and remember those, remember these things I mentioned about, right? How many of you folks have posted back to the graffiti wall in the back? Raise your hand, please. Ah, you've been negligent. So what I'd like you to do now is actually, let's have a conversation now. Let's get Mo into this because Mo, this, this is a term and don't take this wrong if you haven't heard this before. I think Drayton Valley is a skunk works. Do you know what that means? How many people don't know what it means and think I just insulted Mo? What it means is it's an organization within an organization uh, that can do basic research, that can do things very, very quickly because it operates from, with a mantra called, it's impossible to make mistakes if you don't know what you're doing. That could be probably, yeah, I know, it, it, but what it, in fact, but because you can identify that something is new, you can change very quickly. You're not committed to a particular path and say, oops, good thing we didn't do that over the long term. So what I meant by skunk works is as, as, as something where out of a skunk works comes things like text messaging. How many people were using text messages and texting to each other? And come on, let's be honest here. As Mo was giving his talk, raise your hand. I think a lot of people were doing that. So you can thank a skunk works for coming up with that idea about, it. yeah, tweeting, et cetera, and these kinds of capacity. So what I'm getting at is that this is an engine for innovation, innovation of all sorts, about what to do and what not to do. So what I'd like to do is engage the floor and anyone who might be watching this through streaming live uh, to put some questions to uh, Mo Hamden, and I'm going to put a couple questions to you in the interim uh, just before we have uh, this conversation for about 15 minutes, okay? So just raise your hands if you want them, and Lisa will bring a microphone over to you. And no question in this environment is a bad question. Uh, it really is appropriate that we get as much questions out into the floor as we're all gathered here. So Mo, um, how did you sell a community on waste management when emotionally, when you think about garbage and you take municipalities like the city of Toronto was thinking of shipping its garbage to Northern Ontario and the Adams Mine, which became the foundation for a political career in Ottawa, which is fine, but it was so emotionally charged that it was difficult to know like, how did you sell that in your community? We didn't sell anything. Um, in, in Drayton Valley, we've always had uh, open discussion, engagement, and, and th there's an attitude in Drayton Valley, and our theme in our community is pulling together. So it just always uh, having the discussion, and, and when the opportunities come up, just when, when I look at the waste management and what we're going to be doing uh, with this Waste Away project, and talking about the benefits, becoming that zero waste community, creating uh, a product that will help reduce greenhouse gases by t two mm -hmm. million tons over the lifetime of the project. Didn't have to sell. People I talked to go, wow, that's a great idea. Way to well, go. And here's the interrupt, and again, I apologize for doing it because you actually uh, begs this question. Were you able to do this because of the personal relationships and the community was small enough that trust was in play because Mo is telling me this, that it's obviously he investigated this to a point where he's satisfied that this works. So I just have a few questions because there's something about the size of communities and governance where these kinds of ideas become very difficult. 
size you like size uh and the trust it's it's all there it's important it's key and, and we work hard to to create that level of trust but at the same time i need to have confidence in the numbers that i was sharing with the community that you know if you're going to trust me i need to trust what i'm saying as well so we didn't take that lightly i mean we we engaged third-party independent results a blue source to uh to go through the whole thing and identify the uh the total savings uh can met to make sure that the process would work and so we so we so we had third-party verification of mm -hmm. the science of the technology of of all the numbers so that we believed in them because i knew if i had faith in it and i believed right. it I, I i know the community would then have confidence in it as well let me ask you this uh and feel free not to answer this question okay were you ever snowed by anybody Yes. And, and, how did and you how did you spot through? What was the sniff detector on that one? Well, I know when we were we were starting with this and, and working with Dr. Bressler uh, from the University of Alberta Agriculture and Life Science, one thing he said to me is, you're going into something with the whole biomile and bioconversing. There's going to be a lot of people out there that think they have the answer to right. technology. He said, you are going to meet a lot of snake oil salesmen. He says, just be aware of that. So he gave me the heads up at the at the early stages in this. And, and what did you spot? What what if you ha if you had to put a a PowerPoint slide up right now, could you identify the top five? You know the the BS detector that goes ding ding ding. What what uh, what would it be? Well, I I think the first one is when they say that that they have the answer, they have the technology, and there's no issues with it. What and 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 when when you listen to that level of conference. You know, you're you're probably selling me a little more than you have to deliver. So that's usually the first thing that that puts me off. But um, what what we do is we always give the time to sit back, listen, and uh, and ask them the questions. And part of it is staying powers. Those that are still there after a few days, a few weeks, or as we move this process along, are fine. We do have some that come up, and basically what they're looking for is our ability to access government grants to help move their project along. Mm -hmm. And we don't jump into that right away. We so in other words, they were using it as a trigger to get other things going. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're wary of that. Always. Number three, what were you wary of? Christina, can you this help is me a, out on this that is one? A, this is a friendly <laughs> room, okay? And we're get, we'll get to a question. This is a friendly room. Go for it. Um, I don't know what, um, it, it just, it's just trusting in, in, in ourselves and our, in, in our staff. I mean, I've got uh, Christina, my biomile coordinator, uh, Manny, my town manager. We have a, a large group of people that sort of vet through these things, evaluate them. So you them consulted with other people to make sure that you weren't getting snowed. Is this too good to be true? And yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we've got, a strong, we've got a pretty solid team. All right, got it. Yeah. And, and not only that, there's those in the community, those that are pretty vocal. Some of them do a lot of research. And they go online and said, "Did you know that this company did this, this, and this in the past?" Or, and so I get a lot right. of I get a lot of that feedback too, which is yeah. kind of nice. And you'd find out at the post office as you're going to go to the mail. Yeah. Oh yeah, got it. Okay, four. Was there a fourth? Let me think about that. And you know, if something else pops into my head, okay. I will. Okay. Now this now I have sufficient enough time to get somebody who has the microphone somewhere. Could you kindly just tell me who your name is and where you're from, and then uh, please do uh, enter into the conversation. Hello. Here. Yes, hello. My name is uh, Lou Mearns. I'm Métis. I believe in the seven sacred arrows. Whatever we do today is going to affect seven generations. Thank you, Mo, for coming and uh, t uh, telling us how Drayton Valley is. I've been there before. I'm a crane inspector and stayed in your nice community several times. And uh, uh, Have you heard of the vertical wind power systems that they have out uh, now that can be put on your rooftops, like your Walmart, your Canadian Tire, uh, that can help... Uh, uh, these systems are built so there's no centerpiece. It's a magnet over coil. It uh, is quiet. It can produce a lot more power than the three blade. Uh, and it has a system to take the snow and wind off. Uh, it's built in a housing so it has a cage around it so the animals can't get in and uh, have a problem with that. So have you heard of that technology? No, I haven't. But uh, just listening to it, it's something that I definitely would like to hear more about. Okay, and then we also have a, a company from the United States that will finance any of your projects 100% as long as we get a purchase power agreement. So we got garbage to waste, garbage to fuel, uh, LED lighting, all those, uh, uh, as long as you get a purchase power agreement, we'll be financed. We need to talk. 
<laughs> this is this is I, I love this kind of exchange and thank you for that because knowledge capture is very intriguing here. How many mayors and thank you very much for that. How many other mayors, small town mayors and, and small city mayors have actually consulted with you uh, to share information? And I, I think <laughs> we're creating a conference highlight for 2014 are we not did you get a lot of people phoning you was your phone ringing off the hook we I, I've definitely gotten a bunch of phone calls from okay. other mayors other people but you know and it's also you know beyond that we've we've had people come into the community uh, we've had delegations from the Netherlands we've had them from Vietnam we've had from China we've had from Germany so we had several delegations as well what we tried to do is create that international awareness and, and brand ourselves as creating the center, the state of the art, the, uh, the fully integrated bio-industrial park. A lot of places do components, but to create that totally integrated park is something that is very challenging. Um, it's not out there right now, and that's kind of where we're working, and we're getting a lot of that international um, attention because of that as well. Just before we go back to the floor, is there, is there another question out there somewhere? Hello? Yes? No? Somebody put up I, I, I just want to also add a little bit to the uh, the earlier comment is some of the projects we're looking at are huge and, and one of them is in excess of $300 million and they're working on, on getting the finance agreements together and so they have the offtake agreements, they have the fiber supply, some of the partners in place and they're working and, and they're making together. That's always a bit of a challenge. If somebody in Drayton Valley wanted to go and get money to buy a new oil rig or tank truck or something like that. That's proven and, and the cost and, and, and it's a lot easier to get. Some of these things are always a little bit more difficult and, and they've been moving along and it's been helping. It's also very important on these that not only that funding can get in place, but that the federal and the gover and the provincial government get involved mm -hmm. to help reduce some of that cost as you take things from demonstration to commercialization, um, reduce some of those costs. Um, and, and even policy changes to uh, to make it more uh, more of an attractive investment. Mayor Hamden, uh, a, a critical question: uh, When you're working cross culturally and internationally, and you're coming from a perspective in a part of Canada which is unique in many respects, what were the cultural conflicts, if any? Uh, th th there wasn't a lot. Of, I think a lot of people are surprised that you're in the middle of oil and gas and, and you're talking about a bio industry or you're talking about something that replaces oil and gas. And what is that? So, so I, I think initial thought was that it didn't seem to, to make sense that in the middle of the oil and gas industry we're talking about a bioenergy, bio yes, refining. Yeah. And um, what we've always talked about is we're not working against but with and and when, when you sit back and, and look at the work that's done it's, it's again all about the partnerships um, some of the major players in this are those that look at the uh, the ethanol content in their fuel and looking for that secure supply and partnering with the group up front or a diluent uh, or whatever the case may be so it's um, you know th there was probably that uh, raising of the eyebrow at the beginning but that's not there anymore one very quick last question if there's no question from the floor now that you know what you know and you're in and have actually put this process into play whereby you have become an attractor now that you know what you know what would you do that's different and what would you keep and retain in terms of your initial plan that you had to attract this business well at the beginning <coughs> As we were so excited, and I talked a lot about you know a few snake oil salesmen that come by, we would we would sit down and we would chat with anyone and everybody, and we tried to do all things to all people all at the same time, and that definitely slowed us down. So we said, okay, let's let's focus, let's key on certain pieces. What is it that we can do, and that we can do now that we need to do, and uh, and and just just basically become a little bit more focused in in how we approach it. Um, having said that, we'll always uh, want to take that time to, to understand all the opportunities out there and, and, and keep an open mind. So um, I'm pretty happy with, with the way things have progressed. It's definitely a long, a long process. Um, I've, had, I, I've definitely had some counselors and some in the community that uh, would have probably given up on this a while back, but we stuck to it, and now the payback is starting to happen. 
Well, thank you for that. Mayor Hamden, thanks very much, and thank you to the room for paying attention to your keynote and the questions coming up. Thank you, and Mayor I hope Hampton. I see you all next year in Drayton Valley.